I'm KJ Walker from Decentraland and Low Poly Models World, and today we're going to learn about animating for Decentraland. A great way to spruce up your scene is to add animations, so let's take a look at how they work in Decentraland. Before we get into it, there are a couple of things you need to know. Firstly, before animating anything, make sure to press Ctrl and A and select Apply All Transforms. This will set the model's origin point to 000 in 3D space and avoid problems later on. Next, anything animated should be exported separately from other animations. In other words, export animated models one by one. If you want to animate several models, where possible, join them together into one mesh and animate that mesh. For example, if animating an avatar, make sure that all the body parts are part of the same mesh before exporting. If not, the engine will not read all of the animations correctly and there will also be a slight delay. With that in mind, let's take a look at the two main ways to animate for Decentraland, shape keys and bone animations. Shape keys are best for simple models because all of the model's geometry will be affected by the animation to the same degree. Shape key animations are useful for things like lifts and moving platforms. Making a shape key animation isn't too complicated. In Blender, select the model that you want to animate, apply all transforms, and then insert a keyframe. This will be the model's starting point. Now we can add more keyframes to define the object's movement. Finally, as we want this animation to loop seamlessly, we can duplicate the first keyframe and add it to the end of the animation. This is almost seamless, except for the last keyframe, which is shown twice, at the end of the animation and at the beginning. So let's go to the penultimate frame of our animation, add a new keyframe with its current position, and then remove the last keyframe. If we adjust the animation length in the properties panel, we can now see a seamless shape key animation. To export this type of animation, make sure to check animations and shape keys. You don't need to check vertex colors or skinning. Bone animations are great for more complex models such as creatures or models with multiple animations. This type of animation takes into consideration different parts of the geometry for movement within the model like wings which flap or a waving arm. Bone animations also let us stash more than one animation within the same model. This can be extremely useful for developers as it allows for more complex interaction. A good example of this is a door. If the door has two animations, open and close, a developer can activate the open animation and then trigger the close animation once the player has entered the door. To make a bone animation, you will first need an armature, preferably with as few bones as possible. You can create this in Blender and I'll add some links to useful tutorials about how to do that down below. Once you have an armature, select the model you want to animate and apply all transforms. Now select the model and then the armature and parent the objects with Ctrl and P. In most cases, we have automatic weights as the best option though empty groups can also be useful if you want to create something more customized. Next, you can adjust the influence of each bone on the mesh with a process called skinning or weight painting. As with creating an armature, it's a topic of its own and there are a lot of more in-depth tutorials out there which I will link down below. Once your model is skinned to your liking, you can get to animating the model by moving the bones in pose mode and inserting keyframes. In order to create multiple animations, open the dope sheet and the action editor in Blender and create your first animation. Name it and when you're happy with it, press stash. This saves it as data in your file which can be activated or deactivated with code. Neat, right? Now you have an empty dope sheet and you can create your next animation. Name it and stash it. You can do this as many times as needed, but bear in mind that animations take up a lot of data and we want the assets to be as light as possible. When you're ready to export the model, 
open the NLA editor and make sure all of the animations are unchecked, unselected and unlocked. Now select your model and the armature second, making sure to check the armature is yellow and export it as a GLB or GLTF. In this case, you want to check animation, vertex colors and skinning, but you don't need to check shape keys. You can check your animations in babylon.sandbox.js. If you have multiple animations, they should appear in the bottom right for you to toggle between. Those are the main things to know about animating for Decentraland. If you'd like to learn more about building for Decentraland, you can take a look at this playlist. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please put them in the comments section below. Check out the box below for links to relevant documentation and feel free to visit my website, Low Poly Models World.